Welcome back to the Commanders Declassified Podcast, your home for all things Washington Commanders. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. If you're on audio platforms, hit the follow, subscribe, whatever button it is that you can stay locked into what we're doing. If you're on YouTube, you know what to do. Find the button, hit it. Turn on notifications because we're dropping content each week. Now, this is the official Washington Commanders first draft episode. It is boiling into draft season and that means combines are coming up rumor mills are flying etc etc so tonight we're going to take you through different scenarios in the draft to see what kind of players we can end up with we're going to draft based on all the potential coaching hires that we have out there so mike is going to kick us off he has two potential candidates that we've interviewed bobby slowick and eric bien and he's going to tell you how a draft would work out if each of those folks were involved in the picking along with adam peters Mike, take it away with Bobby Slowick. So before I start, I just want to apologize for some of the names that I'm about to butcher <laughs> because I'm just, I, I don't follow college until this time of the year. So a lot of these players' names I'm literally seeing for the first time during the mock draft. So please forgive me. I beg of you, please forgive me. Nevertheless, uh, so yeah, like Ellie said, I'm doing the mock draft if Bobby Slowick was the head coach. Like some of you may have known, he interviewed with Washington in person on Monday, or I believe it was Tuesday, one of those days. Bobby Slowick did interview with Washington for their head coaching position. So this mock draft could be realistic in more ways than one. Um, First of all, we have to get with the bombshell in round one. The Bears, they did not select Caleb Williams with their first pick. They selected Drake May. And... Lo and behold, Caleb Williams falls to number two, the Washington. Of course, I had to take him with the second pick. We talked about him enough. We'll talk about him some more. So I'll just go ahead and go to round two. Um, Tackle with the 36th pick, round two. Tackle Troy Futanu from Washington. Um, I haven't read up on him, but obviously the offensive line is a weakness for Washington. I expect them to target it early in the draft. Will it be with the number 36 pick? I don't know. It depends on how the board goes. But I read up on um, Futanu a little bit. It seems like he's good. He's rated number 35 in PFF's board. So I figure why not? And then round two, I went back to back with tackles. Since y'all love the offensive line so much, <laughs> I doubled down on tackles. And I drafted from Yale. University, Kiran Amagaji, another tackle, ranked 43rd on PF South Mock Draft Board. And, yeah, like I said, it's we know the offensive line has been a weakness, not only last year, but for the last couple of years. There's no consistency. You got pieces moving all over. So I feel like you go back-to-back back with the tackles. You don't have to worry about tackles for a long time. You still got some rookies from last season that you're drafting on the um, depth chart. Um, I believe Braden Daniels is the um, person I'm trying to remember. But, um, yeah, you, you got tackles for days. So we're not dressing the offensive line anymore in the draft. <laughs> Third round, pick number 67, linebacker Peyton Wilson from North Carolina State University. Now, like I said, I don't know who these people are, but I did <laughs> share a, a mock draft with my nephew, and he was very high on Peyton Wilson. The linebacker position is a position that we need to address. And honestly, I think I'd rather address it in the draft than to go get a free agency. We need some young dogs out there. And with Peter's history of getting Fred Warner and Greenlaw in the middle of the draft, I do feel like that that round, that third, fourth round, is the target area for linebackers. Um, in the second, I mean, the second, third round pick, we have K Stover, pick 100. Tight end from the Ohio State University. I actually looked at some tape on this young man. Very, very big, big tight end. I would love if they can find some way to per, um, pair K Stover with our very own Cole Turner. And we could have some pseudo um, um, Hernandez Gronk on a low, low value level tight end duo. I mean, we're dreaming here. We're dreaming. Another pick that my nephew was high on, round four, pick 102, 
running back from the University of Oregon, Bucky Irving. Now, my nephew said Irving is not going to last until the fourth round. I can't argue against him. I can't argue for him either. <laughs> I just know that he was right there waiting for me to pick, and Washington will need to address the running back position if they don't reach sign Antonio Gibson, which I feel like is a very, very possible event that may happen this offseason. Round five, cornerback from Rutgers, Max Melton. Moving to the next round. <laughs> round, <laughs> six. <laughs> round six. We need edge rushers. And there's an edge rusher from Michigan who I vaguely remember from the championship game, Jalen Harrell. Um, he's ranked 182 on PFF's mock board. So it looks like he's a projected six round pick. But I feel like if you can get something out of him, you'll be all right. And I lied. I did draft another offensive lineman. Guard Miles Frazier with the round seven pick, 223 from LSU. Um, if you can remember all the picks I said, that's a quarterback, three offensive linemen, one linebacker, one tight end, one halfback, one corner, and an edge rusher. And I feel like that's a great, great, great start for Bobby Slowick if he were to come to the Washington and if they were to draft these picks. Yeah, generally speaking, I like it. I think, you know, the the later you take tackles in the draft, the more likely they are to become guards at the NFL level. So something to consider there, you know, when you start to get to those middle rounds, looking at taking tackles. Um, I didn't hear you take a wide receiver in that. And I think that that's a position of an underrated need for us. Not something you need a high draft pick, but I didn't hear wide receiver come off the board there. So. Yeah, and I thought about it. I don't think I picked any in the other with the other coach I did either. Um I feel like I want Samuel. I want to bring back Samuel. <laughs> I know he might cost a bit more than they, they're probably willing to play, but I'd rather bring him back and maybe another short <clears throat> change veteran. Like, we have, like, I don't think wide receiver is a big enough problem to pick in the trap for Slowick, but that's just me. Well, you have, there's one particular pick in there I absolutely love, and uh, you'll hear it probably more than once when I go tonight. Um, I thought Fuatana, the tackle, if you can get him in round two with that pick, if he's there, that's a home run. If you can grab that, that's a fantastic pick. If he's there, you take that pick and don't, and don't look back. Um, I actually didn't have him uh, lasting that long in any of the any of the sims I ran. So, yeah, absolutely, that's a great pick. Um, but yeah, there's there's a a one mid round pick that you you put in there that uh, one of my favorite players in the draft. Actually, I'll get into him when I go. But yeah, uh, uh, slam dunk pick. I actually, I liked your draft quite a bit. Thanks. We can right. bring Bobby in. Bobby Slowa can can be here if he's going to draft like that. <laughs> you want to take us through being me, Mike? I thought we were going to um, rotate. Oh, where are we? Okay. Oh, my bad. My bad. Eric, okay. go ahead. You're trying, trying to keep us on the page. <laughs> All right. Would you guys like to hear Ben Johnson or Raheem Morris? What would Let's you go Raheem with? Morris. Stay Let's go basketball. Raheem Morris. All right. Radio Raheem Morris. You guys ever see Do the Right Thing? Yes. <laughs> okay. Radio Raheem. That's of course. Awesome. Every time I hear Raheem Morris' name, I just see him carrying a boombox playing Fight the Power, and I can't <laughs> unsee it, and that's all I see. Uh, all right, Radio Raheem Morris, your draft. Uh, we'll go a little something like this. Round one, pick two. He is a defensive-oriented head coach, uh, but we still need a quarterback. Um, and I'm going to go with Jaden Daniels here at number two. And it's just because I want to be different. I don't want to pick Drake May number two in, in both my drafts. But, um, you know, Raheem, I think, was here in in – in the Shanahan era and remembers RG three. So uh, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> maybe he wants to re relive one season of 10 and six and then failing for 10 more, who knows? But uh, yeah, so we'll go. No, I, I like Jay. I like Jaden. I will not be mad at all. If we hate Jaden Daniels. I do like Jaden Daniels quite a bit. So I'm going to take him at number two. We've talked a ton about quarterbacks. Number uh, 36. We are a defensive. Uh, we got a defensive head coach and we're going to upgrade our secondary. First place we're going to stop is Kalen King corner, uh, defensive back from Penn state a corner. He's a little guy, but he's feisty. Uh, not little. He's, you know, 5'11", 190. Um, very fast, very twitchy, uh, and can can do it all. He's a very good corner. Um, 
he kind of got a little bit of he was a beneficiary of uh of Porter Jr. last year. He got a lot of targets and he made a ton of plays because of it, but he held his own. He was great this year. Caleb King, cornerback at number 36. Moving on to number 40, I am drafting a, a tackle. We're going to the University of Oklahoma, grabbing Tyler Guyton. Not the one that I wanted here, uh, but he's he was here when I when I drafted him, so uh, or when I picked. So we're going Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. Immediately jumps off the screen as a polished blocker. Okay, great. Uh, he's a very good run blocker. Probably going to be a right tackle, but uh, that's who we're going to roll with. Uh, you've got to protect your new quarterback, and what better way to do that than with a road grader right tackle? Number 67, unbelievable this guy was still here at this, and there's no way this happens in the real life, but tight end Jatadian Sanders out of the University of Texas. Um Second best tight end in the draft, I think, uh, prospect-wise. The traits are off the charts. He's big. He's fast. He's a willing blocker. Don't know how great of a blocker he is, but he's going to be willing, very similar to maybe what, like what, uh, if you remember George Kittle as a, as a rookie, he's a guy who wanted to block. He just wasn't really good at it. So maybe mm -hmm. uh, we can we can improve that. Jatavian Sanders, if you can get Jatavian Sanders at 67, that's a home run. Uh, number 96, following Mike's logic, the Adam Peters mid-round linebackers. Uh, this guy fits the mold to a T. We're going Tommy Eichenberg from Ohio State. You got a linebacker from Ohio State. What else do you want? Really? <laughs> uh, fantastic. He's a very productive linebacker uh, for the last two years at Ohio State. He's going to be a really good pro, and I think he's a real steal at 96. Uh, we're sticking the defense uh, with the first round, uh, with the early fourth round pick, Darius Robinson, 6'5", 295 edge out of uh, Missouri. Now, he may be a 3-4 end or a 4-3 tackle. We'll see, but they've got him listed as an edge. We'll, we'll go ahead and keep him there. Uh, back to the linebacker position, you want to you want a one-up an Ohio State linebacker? How about a Penn State linebacker? Curtis Jacobs, 6'1", 227, out of the University. Uh, no, State College. I don't know what they call it. Penn State, that's what we're going to call it. Pennsylvania State University. Darius Robinson, uh, another linebacker. We've got uh, two good guys surrounding our guy, Jamin Davis, next year. Uh, I'm sorry, Curtis Jacobs, rather. Uh, tight end at 163. I know I already took a, a tight end uh, in Jatavian Sanders, but let's be honest, we could upgrade the tight end position across the board. And when there is a tight end from Iowa available in round six, you go ahead and draft that dude because look at the history of Iowa tight ends. Uh, they do okay in the NFL. So this is Eric All out of Iowa, 6'4", 253. I don't think he's Sam Laporta. I don't think he's uh, he's George Kittle, but he is a tight end from Iowa. So that is a that is a fair bet, and uh, it's, a, it's a good it's a good gamble there. And uh, we're going to wrap it up. We are going to go wide receiver. We're going to go Corey Crooms out of Minnesota, sure-handed wide receiver from the what the Golden Gophers is that what they are? Yeah. So Corey Crooms uh, in the seventh round, and that is your draft for Mr. Raheem Morris. It's a good draft. It's a good draft. Spreading the love around a lot of positions. Um, no safeties, though, huh? We, feel like we're we, good got, we safety. got safeties. They really like Quan Martin. I think the next staff is really going to like Quan Martin. I think he was pretty good. He really came on toward the end of the year. Um, Derek Forrest is still yeah. around if he's healthy. Uh, and you've got the option to re-sign Cam Curl. I don't think Cam Curl is going to break the bank personally. I think he can. he'll come back at a somewhat – he'll test the market maybe, but I think he'll come back or he he's gettable at, you know, uh, you know, good, not great safety price. Um, and we'll see if that changes. So I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't sweat the safety position of the draft at all. So can I ask you about Tyler Guyton? Because he was someone that I was looking at, but just reading up the quick read that I was doing on him, I was like, oh, especially for the second round where, um, they had on, well, yeah, in the mock draft, they had him projected there, but. Reading up on him, I heard I saw that he wasn't the greatest pass protector. So, is there any more you can elaborate on that? Yeah, Guyton. Um, again, he was not the one I was hoping to get at that right. round. I kind of gambled to hope to, to for uh, I have another guy that I did draft under on the uh Slowick draft or in the uh Ben Johnson draft, but so we'll elaborate on him more later. I think he's a he's a project, he may be even a guard candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is an Oklahoma offensive lineman, and you can do worse than those. I mean, those guys are well coached. They're generally tough as nails. And some guys are better in pro than they are in college. Um, and, it, you know, there's a lot that you can do to improve his game. Uh, it's going to come down to coaching. But, you know, it, he was there. Again, not my first choice for a tackle that I wanted in the second round. 
but without being able to trade, which my option obviously would be to trade back up into the first round and grab like Fashani or Alt, but you'd have to really give up a lot to move up high enough to get those right. guys. Um, I'd be willing to do it because those guys are that good, uh, especially Alt. But um, yeah, so Guyton, you know, he was kind of a, I was dead set, I think, on drafting a tackle at that spot. And he was the the one that I, I ended up going with because the guy I really wanted wasn't there. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I had a problem with. That's why I wouldn't be a good GM. <laughs> I would have just moved <laughs> right. on to another player, but no. Got to get it. Right. Um, yeah. with, with us not trading in this mock draft, I don't know if we mentioned that or not, but with us not trading in this mock draft, that's what it was hard for me to do. Do I draft by need or do I draft by – how they were ranked in uh, PFS mock rank thing. So, yeah, it was it was difficult. Like, I don't envy general managers or scouts or anybody in the draft process at all. Yeah, and I think we all use the PFN simulator. I think we, we probably should have said that before. No, I but... switched to uh, PFF. Oh, you went to PFF. Oh, look at you, big yeah. money. And I was all over the place on the internet. So, <laughs> yeah, what's funny is like I had one where I did just playing around and I traded down. Uh, I traded down with the Falcons because, like, I think Caleb Williams went one. And, you know, it, they offered me, like, a ton of stuff to move up. And then they drafted Malik Neighbors at two. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, okay. So then they drafted him, like, over, like, Marvin Harrison and, <laughs> like, all the other quarterbacks. So, yeah, good on you. But that's a weird – like, I don't really maybe trust PFN. Maybe you were right to switch to PFF. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I have the distinguished Aaron Glenn, who's been interviewed by this team, and the team's traveling to do a second interview with this gentleman as well. He is my number one coaching candidate right now. Personally speaking, I really like what Aaron Glenn does in Detroit. Now, his draft, obviously he's a defensive head coach, right? So he's going to protect his side of the ball. But to Eric's point, we need a quarterback. We go Jane Daniels round one. That's our guy. Which, who I actually think at this point in time will be our guy come April as well. But um, so Jane Daniels, number one, round two, uh, Troy Fatanu, Fatanu, the uh, the guard, which everybody's kind of said something about. Uh, our second pick in the or in the second round, I have Jonah Ellis. He's an edge rusher. Guys, this is the next Ryan Kerrigan. Washington mm -hmm. fans are going to love him. We need to replace the edge rushers that we lost last year. High motor guy, a lot of effort, really works hard. This is Ryan Kerrigan 2.0, I promise you this. Um, in the second pick in the uh, second round, I went back to the bank, and I got Chop Robinson out of Penn State, another edge rusher. So back-to-back -back edge rushers. Now we've solved our edge rusher needs. We're looking good. Round three, defensive head coach. I went Jeremiah Trotter, the linebacker from Clemson. Listen, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., excuse me. You know who his dad was? This guy brings the pain like method, man. It's going to solve our defensive problems. We're too soft in the middle, and uh, that's going to change this year with Jeremiah Trotter. Our second pick in the third round, Jaheen Bell, tight end. You know, Mr. Athlete. This guy is a baller. And we need him. I think he's out of Florida State, um, tough as nails, built like a 67 Corvette. I mean, the guy is just all muscle and uh, ready to put those Cole Turner dreams to bed. This is a real tight end that can play. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Round four, wide receiver, Xavier Weaver out of Colorado. He played for Dion. He played with Shador. This guy time and time again came up big playing against the uh, USC playing against um, some of the other groups, Colorado State, et cetera. This guy is a really good receiver. Think about Rache Rice with the Kansas City Chiefs. That's He's that kind of guy. We need this kind of guy in our offense, you know. Um, can't hurt to have him. In our fifth-round pick, I went Sachoa Lumea out of Utah. Okay, he's a tackle. This guy is a four-year starter. He's strong as is or tough as nails. Um, you know, just a, a big guy, a lot of strength. I like him there. Um, do I see him staying at tackle? I think so. I think he can make it at tackle. Is he gonna start right away? Probably not, but you know, maybe in a rotation. We'll see how he develops. He's probably a guy that's gonna be a backup for a little while at least. Round six, Donovan Edwards. 
And if you're saying who, you didn't watch the national championship game. This is the running back from Michigan. No, not Blake Corum, who I absolutely love. This is the other guy that stole the show in the national championship game. When he got the ball, he was making house calls all day. Check his phone bill. He was calling the house as soon as he got the ball every single time. He is the explosive running back that we need in this offense to bring our running game out of the boring ground and pound into the 21st century. All right. Now, pick set, or excuse me, round seven. I went Bryce Foster as a center. Centers you can get late and you can develop those guys over time and they eventually become a pretty decent starter. I think Bryce Foster is that exact candidate. I like Bryce Foster. That is our seventh round pick. And that is how Aaron Glenn would fill out this roster through the draft along with Adam Peters. Fellas, what say ye? Did you take Jeremiah Trotter Jr. in the third round? Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> How the hell did that happen? Heck yes. No, where where did he – what like universe – like what color is the sky in the universe where he lasts to the third round? Like he's going like high second at the earliest or at the nah, latest. I mean. Quarterbacks and needs are going to bump things down. I'm telling you. That's how I go. Edge rushers. Third round. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But, um, it was your other pick um, that I was watching some highlights on. You um, said he was the next Ryan Kerrigan. So I was like, let me see this. Jonah Ellis. Um, yeah. Yeah. From the first, I mean, from the 40 seconds I watched on YouTube, I can see the comp. I understand what you mean. He's not like explosive like a Von Miller or Joey Bosa exactly. or things like that. But he worked really, really hard on each and every single play that they showed on the highlight film. Exactly. Um, he didn't even like get a sack on all the plays, but that motor was definitely high. So I can I completely understand. Um, and Jaheim Bill, you'll never guess where I picked him in my uh, mock draft for EB. <laughs> where? Probably the same. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you when I do the mock. But I didn't know if Eric had yeah, anything I like, else. I like Jaheim Bill a lot too. Uh, there's several tight ends in this draft that I really, really like. Jaheim Bell is, is definitely one of them. Yeah, I'll be shocked if we don't draft at least one tight end um, this upcoming draft. And for the second time, I know, like we said, that we weren't doing trades, but I got a feeling like Peters is going to want to add a lot of draft picks to the – how many we have right now? Ten? Um, is it ten or nine? Nine, I think. I can't. But, yeah, I feel like we're definitely leaving the draft with double-digit picks. The picks that we have now will not be the amount that we leave with um, in late April. But um, if nobody else had anything to say about uh, Raheem Smock, I'll go ahead next. Did I make um, an extra pick in the second round? There's How many you make? 36 and 40. I might have given you an extra pick. Uh, if I did, that was the Trotter pick. That's, that's why you draft so Man, well. Yeah, that was the Trotter. <laughs> throw <laughs> players there. No, it wasn't Trotter. I think I, I think the, my two edge rushers, I don't think I had the – I think I was looking at my list for my next pick. So scrap the Chop Robinson <laughs> pick. Focus on Jonah Ellis for this one. I screwed that up. My bad. All right, Mike, take us away so we can forget this madness I've created. <laughs> it's all gravy, bro. It happens. So um, I did Eric B. Enemy, like Ali said, um, mock draft. And this time the Bears did take Jaden down. I mean, Jaden down, I'm sorry. Um, Caleb Williams, I'm sorry, with the number one draft pick. So I went Drake May, number two, if B. Enemy was the head coach. And the reason I did that is because this is for everybody that keeps saying that Drake May and Howell are the same quarterback. They're not the same quarterback. I can tell you right now. Today, if Drake may play the game today, he would probably be better in the enemy's offense than Howell, just strictly on his mechanic. I mean, not mechanics, his um, wherewithal and his physical attributes. That alone would fit perfectly with the enemy. Now, he may have to work on his footwork or whatever, but like I said, we talked about quarterbacks enough, and we're going to talk about them even more so. I'm moving on to the second round pick and another word from my nephew. He said, this player will not be here at 36, but I took him anyway. Kenyon, Quinion Mitchell, cornerback from Toledo. We have to get another quarterback. I'm cornerback. I don't, <clears throat> no disrespect to Fuller. I don't want to resign him for the money that he's probably expecting next offseason. He did play well for Washington last year, 
Like, let's not get it twisted. But he's kind of up there in age. I'm ready for the youth movement. And um, this fella, Quinian Mitchell, um, he I haven't looked at him or read up on him. I don't know what uh, PFF had. And, yeah, he seems like he's a baller. I like his size. I like his um, att- physical attributes. But that's all I can give you right now. And uh, for the round two pick, number 40, I went ahead and uh, selected Kieran uh, Magaji again. Um, like I said, we need a tackle. So went ahead and drafted another tackle, um, Kieran, with the second pick again. So don't be surprised if he actually does become a Washington commander. But I digress. Um, third round, pick number 67, Ezrin Cooper, linebacker from Texas a and Um I didn't read up on him, but I do know that it's a position of need. I'd hate to go back to the SEC to get another linebacker, but like I said, it's something that we really, really need. Um, I took my nephew's advice. He said Bucky Ehrman wouldn't last for the fourth round, so I drafted him in the third round for Eric Bieniemy, And I feel like, uh, bro, uh, Bucky Ehrman, Brian Robinson, um, Christian Gonzalez, trio at running back, you would think will work, even with the enemy not running the ball as much as he did. I feel like with those three running backs and the lessons learned from last season, the running game would be much, much better under the enemy. If he were, if y'all, if he were to be hired, no one saying he is. I know you had the interview, but <laughs> if, just keep that in mind. Round four, pick 102, uh, Matt Gun Gunclays, Gun Cobbles, tackle from out. Pittsburgh. Um, again, don't know much about him, but he comes very highly rated from PFF, rank 105th on their big board. I've dipped late for an edge round, uh, edge rusher this time, Xavier Thomas from Clemson. Yeah, I went back to that Clemson will. It seems to work well for um, the edge rush that we got from there last year, late in the draft. And I believe, was um, Henry in the fifth round, too, last season? I think so. Fifth, uh, fifth yeah, I think six. so. Fifth round pick, yeah. Yeah I, think he, yeah, I think he was the fifth round pick. So, yeah, go back to the fifth round and get his partner. And <laughs> let's cook next season. Ali, sixth round, 181. That's where I picked Jaheim Bell. Tight end from Florida State. Now, the way you, I, I I don't know about the fella, but the way you were saying that he was, um, the how happy you were getting him in the fourth round, I believe, getting him in the sixth round seems like a steal. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I, I I liked the pick when I made it, but now I loved it after hearing that you got him in the fourth, and um, I rounded out the draft for the enemy in round seven with another. <laughs> Um, corner, a linebacker from SEC, and coincidentally, this linebacker is from Kentucky, Trevin Wallace. And, um, yeah, he's ranked 208 on PF, so that's big board. And, like, I mean, I feel like with this draft, and well, both drafts that I had for Slowick and the enemy, I tried my best to think what would Peters do, and I feel like you gotta hit multiple knees not only during the draft, but in a free agency too. And I feel like if he can just do that, like just use his magic, especially in those middle rounds, I feel like those that those first three picks, the round one and the two second round picks, I think those would be great picks from Peters. But I really, really feel like in the middle of the draft, that's where he's going to cook for us. And that's what I can't wait to see. Yeah, the, the Quinion Mitchell pick. Oh, he's yeah, that guy's legit. He's gonna shoot up. He's I can't gonna wait rise. to see him. Yeah, he's gonna rise. I mean, he went to Tro- uh Toledo. Um, uh-huh. so the exposure really wasn't there. I mean, mm-hmm. scouts know who he is, but at, you'll hear a lot more about him as the draft season progresses, like the combine stuff like that. That guy's that guy's a baller. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm excited to look at his look at his tape and highlights yeah, on like, YouTube. Yeah, I I highly doubt he's there at 36, but if he is, snatch him right up. Absolutely. Yeah. Jaheim Bell, <clears throat> he's projected the fourth round right now, but once the combine comes, he's going up. You can yeah. promise yourself that. So if you I get don't know if six, y'all saw. I'm sorry. 
I was gonna say if you get Jaheim Bell in the six, Adam Peters will be executive of the year, first year in Washington. <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw uh, Mill Kuyper's mock draft, but he had the tight end from Georgia going fifth to the Chargers. Yeah. If he if that happens, yeah, tight ends are there will be a huge run on tight ends later in the draft. So I like it. Yep. We got Eric. Take us through right. we got. All right, Ben Johnson, should he get the job? How will he how will his draft look? It's going to look a little bit different than Raheem Morris's. Uh and a little bit different with the rest of your guys, but uh a, a lot the same <laughs> as well cuz you know we're we're all the same people picking from the same pool of people. So there's going to be some overlap, but uh Ben Johnson and uh and Adam Peters working together, here's what I think that might look like. Round 1 pick 2, I I went with Drake May, quarterback. Um at this point, Drake May is still QB2 for me. Um, that could change. Uh, I wouldn't be mad, like I said before, if we went Jaden Daniels. But Drake made to me at this point, like not, nothing, not enough has changed for him to not be QB2. I think he's going to be – I'm just re- doing a lot of, of reading and, and kind of watching what what other evaluators – and some evaluators haven't been super high on him, and I, I'll kind of take that into account and a little bit more. But, you know, guys like former NFL quarterbacks and, and people who, who study the position, just a lot of the consensus seems to be with Drake May that he's just going to be – he's most likely gonna, going to – really get better as a pro. He's going to have a better pro career probably than he did college because of the stability um, and the coaching around him. Um, and then, you know, it's really on him to improve, but he's the sky's the limit for him. Like he can be a really good quarterback. And I think at this point, this is subject to change because it's the third week in January. But right now I think Drake may is still QB two. So he's round one pick two for me. Uh, round 236, we got to get that man some weapons, and I got me a good one. Xavier Leggett out of University of South Carolina, yes. six foot three, 230 pounds with a 4340. Are you kidding me? DK Metcalf, how are you? That's it's a clone, man, and he can move too. It's not like a straight line speed, he can play, he can move. Uh, he's gonna have a monster combine if he's there at 36. Yeah, I'm grabbing him. Xavier Leggett out of uh, University of South Carolina, pick 40 in round two. Uh, This is the offensive tackle I wanted the first time around. uh, Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Uh, Jordan Morgan would have been a high first round pick last year, would have been one of the first three tackles off the board last year. He blew his ACL out in 2022. uh, So he returned to college, got better. He did not lose any of that athleticism, but he was working his way back from that injury. So the season wasn't as on point. He's going to be all the way back and he's going to be an absolute steal at pick 40. He's going to be a legit athletic left tackle. Broderick Jones from last year reminds me of him, but a more polished version because he's got a lot more starts under his belt. Uh, and you guys know I love Broderick Jones last year. I love Jordan Morgan this year. So if he's there at pick 40, that's that's the pick for uh, for uh, Peters and uh, Ben Johnson. Uh, round 367. Was it earlier? A couple of weeks ago, Jahan Dotson, I think it was, I said, he said, every team needs a J.D. McKissick. Wasn't that Dotson that said that? Somebody said that. Yep. Well, I'm giving me a J.D. McKissick right here. Round three, pick 67. I'm going with Will Shipley out of Clemson, the running back. He is a he is a he, he oh Ellie don't like that pick he's no, a, I like he, now he's a uh, he's a he's a third down back prototype he's in that Chris Thompson a uh, little bit bigger than Chris Thompson not quite as big as J D McKissick uh, he is a blocker he can catch out of the backfield he can run that dumbass play out of the shotgun that every offensive coordinator loves he's he's <laughs> suited for that play. Uh, he can get it done between the tackles. He's certainly not going to be an every down back, but he's going to be a very good change of pace back. I'm taking him at three at no, pick 67 in round three. Will Shipley out of Clemson, number 96. This is the guy uh, I agreed very heavily on with uh, Mike earlier on. And that's my guy, Cade Stover out of Ohio State. Uh, if you watch Ben Johnson's offense in 2022 and 2023, the massive leap was the tight end that they selected on day two. Uh, in Sam Laporta, and I am drafting this year Sam Laporta. That is Cade Stover. I had him last year in my early mocks because he was considering coming out, but he was going to be probably a fourth or fifth round pick. He is a day three pick all the way. The only reason he's not a first rounder, in my opinion, is his height. He's about, he's depending on who you ask, he's 6'1 or 6'2. So not huge for a tight end, but look at some 6'1. Aaron Hernandez was a 6'1. Uh, Cade Stover is uh, much less murdery, so I think he can have a good career. <laughs> Jordan Reed was barely 6'2. Uh, so it's not un- uncommon to have a, a tight end, uh, a six foot one tight end. It's not the worst thing in the world, but that's probably going to keep him from going higher. Uh, he is a, he is a contested catch master. He is great in the open field. He has great hands. He is a sound blocker. Um, again, uh, he's not going to dominate anybody at his size, but he is a, he is a willing blocker and he can get it done. 
He is going to be a legit NFL tight end. I would be ecstatic if we can land him at pick 96. Uh, pick uh, round four, pick 98. I'm going back to the well with Tommy Eichenberg. I just think he is a linebacker that Adam Peters is going to love. Uh, again, he's out of Ohio State. He's a great compliment to Jamin Davis. He's a thumper in the middle, but very athletic as well. Um, pick uh, round five, pick 122. I can't read my own handwriting. Uh, Javon Solomon, uh, an edge out of Troy. He is an explosive edge setter. Again, a shorter edge, uh, probably doesn't have the length. Think, um, well, I've got two guys actually that fit that, so I'll use the description later, but I've got another edge coming up that's a similar description. He's a very powerful, very explosive player, just doesn't have the length that your traditional edge rusher uh, does, but he has the ability to make up for it with his athleticism. Uh, Javon Solomon out of Troy. Uh, 163, uh, I'm going back to the wide receiver well, and we are taking a slot guy this time. We are taking Taj Washington out of the University of Southern California. He is, uh, he is a very sure-handed receiver. Very productive at USC as a slot receiver. I think he had like the exact same stats three years in a row. It was like 40 catches for 600 yards, literally three years in a row. He's going to be, uh, he's going to fit right in as an NFL slot receiver. And uh, last pick, round seven, Muhammad Kamara out of Colorado State. Another edge, another short edge, another very explosive edge. And the, the comp I come up with on these guys uh, between Solomon and uh, Kamara is uh, old school Elvis Doomer, Doomerville back in the day. Just a little fire hydrant coming off the edge, but really fast and getting around guys. And that's kind of the way these guys look to me. So that is my Ben Johnson draft. You guys can feel free to rip me apart. I liked it. I liked it. The, the Shipley pick, man. When I, I watched him in a game this year, I don't remember who was it against, but you just couldn't stop him. It was it reminded me a lot of Danny Woodhead in New England. He's mm -hmm. um, <clears> that kind of player. I know the the white on white comparison. I'm not trying to do that intentionally, but when I watched him play, that's who I was thinking about. JD McKissick is a, a good, decent comp too. I think the difference for me between him and JD McKissick is I think Chipley's can be a little bit more involved in the offense on a regular basis than what you saw with McKissick. So yeah. I like you know running the ball especially. He he looked really good, and he plays special teams too, right? Like punt returner, does. I think. Yeah, he um, can do it all. Do it He's all. A, yeah, he was actually. Uh, uh, coming out of high school he was the number one running back recruit in the country i didn't realize that until i was reading about him but yeah will shipley out he's yeah he's gonna be a fun player he's gonna be a role player for sure but he can be he can do a lot for you i think he'll be a good player yeah with his size he runs hard for his size i'm yep. noticing that almost immediately how's yeah, his he's hands not, he's not tiny he's 205 pounds probably so he's not huge but he's not like chris thompson small either yeah, how's his hands? I know you say he's like McKissick. Good receiver. Like, yeah, he's really he, like they really liked to use him on uh the little bubble screens. They love running those bubble mm -hmm. screens to him. And yeah, catching out of the backfield on wheel routes and 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 uh that that type of thing. He's he was really good. He was a very productive receiver. And he can get it done between the tackle. He's not like a grinder, he's not a Brian Robinson type for sure, but he can yeah, he can pick his spots. And he can run between the tackles. He's one of those guys that kind of gets lost back there. So yeah, he'll be fun. He'll be a fun player to have. Uh, an offensive coordinator is going to like him a lot. For what it's worth, I'm also like taking notes from my dynasty league draft <laughs> later in the year too. So, <laughs> all right, I have Dan Quinn's draft up next. The Commanders are Ooh. showing some interest in him too. Uh, we're going to kick it off round one, Jaden Daniels. Spoiler alert, all my coaches take Jaden Daniels because I think that's what we're doing. Round two, Dan Quinn, Kamari Lassiter, defensive back. Look, Dan Quinn would walk in this defensive room the first day and say, hey, he can, he can get the Deion Sanders speech. I'm bringing luggage, and it's Louie. Kamari Lassiter didn't come with him, but he's going to tell the other guys hit the transfer portal or whatever that NFL version of that is. I think free agency, call your agent. Kamari Lasseter is a very physical corner. I like him a lot. I think he can add to what we're doing. Um, and I think, like, you know, you mentioned Fuller earlier. I'm not sure what happens with Fuller. We may bring him back. We may not. But either way, we need somebody on the opposite side. I think Lasseter can fill that role adequately. This is in the second pick in the second round. This is where Chop Robinson went. So pardon me. Dan Quinn has a Penn State edge rusher in Micah Parsons. He's going back for more with Chop Robinson. He's a beast. His second, or excuse me, going to the third round, we have Layden Robinson out of Texas A&M. He's a guard, big physical guy. Adam Peters wants to build this team up the middle. Hey, what what better to do than get a guard to play opposite of uh, Sam Cosme? So 
That's going to help our run game. It's going to help our pass game. Then Quinn in his second, third round pick comes back and gets Caleb Bullock, a free safety. This guy makes plays. He got better every single year. He has good coverage skills, um, you know, defends a pass well, has good vision, can run across the field, do all the things that you need a free safety to do. You're going to say, hey, but what about our guy, Quan Martin? I'm going to say, look, I saw Bakari Rambo, Rambo right? I saw um, – who's the other guy? Jarrett, Cal the Virginia Tech guy, Jarrett, that we had the last – like, he got hurt, but he didn't last long. I saw some of the other folks that we brought in. Um, Derek Forrest had a good season last year, but then the season that we just went through wasn't that great before he got hurt. So get me a free safety in this draft. Earlier on in the draft, let's see what they can do. Uh, then Quinn in the fourth round comes back and says, let me continue to beef up the offensive line. I'm going Kelvin Banks, the offensive tackle. Do I think Banks is going to play tackle? No, I don't, but I think it's a possibility. He'll probably slide in the guard. He's depth at this point in time. Now, here's the steal of Dan Quinn's draft. He's going to get Dolan Holker, the tight end out of Colorado State University. This guy went absolute ape on Colorado. He had six catches, two touchdowns, 111 yards. He is he is this year's Sam Laporta. You know what I'm talking about, number five. Yep. He is this year's Sam Laporta. I'm telling you, you mentioned somebody else, Eric. It's this guy. This guy is so freaking tough at the tight end position. I love everything about Dolan Holker. He is a monster. The kind of guy we need. Um, sixth round, we come back and get Lad McConey, a wide receiver this year. I don't know anything about Lad McConey. But what I do know is Lad McConey knows how to play the game of football. He knows where to be. I don't know who Dan's Quinn offensive coordinator is going to be, but I imagine it's going to be one of those really multiple and versatile offensive schemes. And I think that Lad McConey fits in that scheme very well. Think of a Wes Welker kind of guy. That's who this offense could really use. And then the seventh round, Dan Quinn says, let me upgrade at the running back position. Give me Marshawn Lloyd out of USC. Play with Caleb Williams. This guy is big. He's physical, but he's also really twitchy. And this guy can shake it up in the backfield. Dan Quinn has completely fixed our team with his draft as well. Fellas, give it to me. I don't know who any of those people are. <laughs> None? <laughs> I was going through on like. I was like, Lassiter, didn't he already play in the NFL? And I was trying to think of the other guy. Yeah, I, I must have completely missed out on those guys. I, I have nothing to say about Lassiter. <laughs> I was thinking of Kwame Lassiter. That's what I was like, I know I heard that name before. Okay. Yeah. It's two things um, I forgot about Hawker. Like, yeah, yeah, bring him here. Bring yeah. him here. Like, yes. I mean, are we playing he Colorado should. every week? or? <laughs> Did hey. he do anything outside of? Yes, no, he did. Eric. They, he was very consistent. Look it up. If okay, they I'm have to up, show so. him that Colorado tape every week to get him ready, they're like you are possible, this is possible for you. <laughs> I would. <laughs> hey, but yeah. um, my other thing is, why are you so um, like convinced we're getting Daniels? We don't even have a head coach yet. He just because he he's going to be the number two. You don't understand how much Ellie loves RG three. It's, no, it's, no, no, no. Oh. I do. I, I did. I did. I will cop to that. <laughs> but I've been on Jane Daniels train for three years now. Mm -hmm. And I think after the combine, Jane Daniels is going to be QB2 after the combine. And we're going to pick second in the draft. So I think that's why we're going to end up with Jane Daniels. Listen, if that and, happens, then sign me up for Daniels too, because the Drake May train, like that, that May Daniels train is like really like, plan for a position right now this combine is going to be amazing to see like what happens after that to get some separation because i'm pretty sure neither one of them is playing in the senior bowl right any right. senior games right yeah i mean may's a junior so he, i don't think he can I mean, yeah Daniel is probably no, too I old thought to one of them bowl. one of the um bowl team i mean bowl games changed that rule oh really they They're might allowed, don't know. yeah okay there's but, no, but yeah, you're, you don't, you don't, I don't play think either one of them has much to that much to prove. Yeah, to, you're right. not doing that. To play in if that you're game. a guaranteed I mean, top five pick, there's no way you're risking playing that injury game. and all that. Yeah, I mean, you'll see them. I mean, they'll probably interview at the combine, maybe run the 40. Um, but yeah. they're not going to do a lot even at the combine. They're going to have they're going to rely on their pro days to really make the case for themselves. And Daniels, Daniels could be that guy. I'm not discounting it at all. I think he's super athletic and he's. 
his like his footwork, his mechanics are pretty good. I just my main concern with Daniels is like is honestly the RG three comparison. Like it, it does scare me. I know for some people that's a good thing, but he is much to me. He's a lot closer to RG three than he is to Lamar Jackson. I think a lot of people want him to be Lamar Jackson. He's not as big and physical as Jackson is. Um, and it, it, right now he really seems to be like a a, a one read one read and run quarterback, and that scares me a little bit. And it's going to take me a while to get over that. And I've seen some highlights, and I've seen him come off his primary read, but in the times he did it, he had a ton of protection, and he had all day to throw. So there's just some 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 hurdles, mental hurdles I have to get to get over to really get on that that high train for for Jaden Daniels. And hey, maybe the Bears will like pass on uh, Caleb Williams, and we won't even have to have this discussion. That'd be even better. But that um, would be the best outcome. Yeah, yeah. That would be the great option. Um, so yeah, I, I at this point, like I said in in my draft, I think at this point Drake May for me is still my number two, but I do like Jaden Daniels quite a bit. Drake May has so people i think people are still just getting into the drake may tape too and i think there's going to be some things on that tape that you're not going to love like him being overly conservative at times Jaden daniels is none of that he's going for it he's going for it big um but we'll see we'll let it play out i just feel pretty confident Jaden daniels will be qb too but I, i've been wrong before it might be wrong this time um all right eric do you have any coaches left um i can do a joe gibbs draft uh, <laughs> no, I don't have any more. I think I did. I had Ben Johnson and did we do Mike McDonald? Did anybody get Mike McDonald? I got that one. I'm gonna go that oh, one right okay. now. Yeah, do we Mike have any McDonald. other? Yeah, can, I it. think he's the last candidate we have. Yeah, he is. The young coordinator out of Baltimore, the the showstopper of showstoppers on defense. Nobody succeeds against his defense. Mike McDonald, quarterback, Jane Daniels, stamp it, moving on. Second round, Mike McDonald says, let me get my defensive ends of the future. He's going Jonah Ellis. You heard me call his name before. I really genuinely believe Jonah Ellis is the type of player that Adam Peters is going to love and really could bring here. Now, third or second pick, third pick for the commanders, um, Ennis Rockstraw. Uh, Ray Straw, maybe? Corner, yeah. Ray Straw, Corner. yeah. Corner, yeah. yeah. I like, like that guy. like his last name even better, but a uh, really good guy. Really good cornerback there. Round three, Peyton Wilson. You mentioned it earlier, Mike. I think, and I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, but I think this is the kind of guy that will end up on our team somehow, some way. He is the kind of hard nosed linebacker, throwback linebacker, too, that really could make a difference here. I like Peyton Wilson a bunch. I heard the NFL on Sirius XM talking about him. Um, they were really high on him, too. So I like what he can do. I'm excited to see him here. Should he come here? Now, guard. In the second, third round pick, Isaiah Adams is a guard that I picked for us for Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald says, I need to improve on the interior before I improve on the exterior in the offensive line. He does that. Then he comes back in round four and gets offensive tackle Dominic Puny. Yeah, what a name for an offensive lineman, especially an offensive tackle. But this guy can block his behind off. Um, he's still improving, though, so don't think that he's a finished product by any means. But I think he could play for us relatively early. And then the fifth round, he comes back and says, hey, you know what? Michigan just won the national title. Give me A.J. Barner, the tight end out of Michigan. Um, is he – am I ex excited about A.J. Barner as I am the other tight ends I said before? I'm not. But he could play. I think he can play. He'll be pretty good, right? Then in the sixth round, he comes back and he says, listen, give me Rasheen Ali. I need a running back. Rasheen Ali, he's a good running back, guys. Look him up. Um, and then in the seventh round, he goes Jaden Wally, a wide receiver, a big guy, a big wide receiver that we can use on this team. Now, one thing to know about Rakeshaw, Rockshaw? Rakestraw. What is it? Rakestraw. Oh, I said it right. Um, Rakestraw did not have a significant – uh, output in terms of turnovers and when I was looking at this I was like man why am I getting a we have Benjamin St. Juice why do we want another corner that hasn't generated a bunch of turnovers in his career now what I'm gonna say is I think that speaks to the quality of his play that quarterbacks don't test him a lot but also there's room to improve I think this guy can get better over time he only has one interception his entire college career does that make you nervous? A little bit, but I think he can do it. It is an area that he needs to improve on, attacking the ball, 
but I think he's a really solid cover guy. What do you guys think? So to me, Rake Straw, I, I I do like him, but he is Benjamin St. Juice's mindset in Emmanuel Forbes' body. So <laughs> he's that a horrible. It, it's not it's not necessarily a bad like he he doesn't he's not as aggressive, he's not like a ball hawk or alleged ball hawk like like what, uh-huh. what Forbes was in college. And that was Forbes' calling card, right? He was an aggressive corner that created a lot of turnovers and made a lot of plays, but he's very thin. Um, well, Ray Charles very thin. I mean, he's not, I don't know that he's as quite as thin as, as Forbes was coming out. I think he's about 185 or so. Yeah. Not, not big by any stretch, but, um, yeah, he's very long. He's very, um, he's very Forbes like in his build and his speed, his measurables. He's got very good measurables, but as far as like his coverage, look, he, he's very grabby in coverage and he tends to, um, not get his head around quickly, which is why he doesn't get a ton of, of balls in his way. So there's a lot to like, and there's a lot to fix. I don't think he's, I don't know. It, yeah, he's like a combination of Forbes and St. Juice to me. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's good or bad. Cause again, I'm still the guy on this podcast that really likes Emmanuel Forbes. So I'm a still a for, and if we can have two of that guy, I'm cool with it. Um, but he is not the ball Hawk that, that Forbes was in college by any stretch. But no, no. again, I do and, like him. He's got good measurables. He's fat. He's got good speed, good length. Um, he stays with his guy generally. He just gets grabby when the ball's in the air. Um, and, you know, that a lot of times flies in the NFL. You can get away with it sometimes. So yeah, we'll just have to see what happens with him. Not yeah, the worst prospect. Don't get, he's not. But you don't genuinely see guys that don't get picks in college come to the NFL and start making picks all over the place. That doesn't right. usually happen. Yeah. But I'm going to take a risk on that one because I like his coverage ability. I like his – his, his demeanor um, when he's playing football. Now, we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm not, I wouldn't die on the hill for that pick. Let me just say it that way. So, no cool. Kate's over for you, man. No Kate's over, man. We Telling you. AJ. That's the guy. <laughs> we all took tight so, ends, though. So like, we all want to upgrade that. Yeah, player. I feel like if we don't lead a draft with Kate Stover or um, the tight end from Florida State, uh, what's his name? That means we got Jatavian, and I'm cool with that, too. Yeah. I feel like one of those two should be a commander in August or April or whatever. But, um, yeah, this was this was fun. Like, I'm not a I'm not a mock draft banner because um, I don't <laughs> follow college. Like I said, oh until God. around – <laughs> it's we're gonna do a live one on air that like we did last year. We're gonna do a live one yeah, on air soon. Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, by that time, I should it. have much more knowledge of the um, draft class that, that's available. But right now, it's so like I just feel like we're warming up. Like, well, me personally, oh, yeah. I'm warming up. Like, I feel like the next couple of weeks are going to be so much fun. And once we do get our head coach. Rather it be slow like Ben Johnson. I'm even warming up to Quinn and Raheem Morris. Like I really feel like I, I'm trusting the ownership group to make the best decision for not only the organization but for the fans. And that's something like we really. I I, I know we're beating a dead horse, but it, it's it's really a relief to have an ownership group that we can trust. Yep. Yeah, it, it's, for now. It's, it's so much like our fan base to just be over the moon because we hired Adam Peters until he hires a head coach we don't like, and then all of a sudden we hate him. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm going to trust the group and that he's going to do a good job it's, to hire whoever. It's it. literally but, 10 head coaches they could hire, and I'll be okay with If they hire that 11th person, who it may be, I'm not going to throw no names out there. They hire Joe, Joe Barry. But no, I'm joking. Oh, <laughs> if they hire Joe Perry. Oh, yeah. You Did remember we, uh, when we? You remember when we um, had Fossil? Or there were rumors that Jim Fossil coming here, yeah. and the fans yep. like had a riot. It would be that times five. Jim if, Fossil if wasn't even that bad of a head coach either. <laughs> That's <laughs> he really wasn't. That's <laughs> like we lost him bad. and got Zorn. Right, like. Was, all right, give, give me your three favorite picks from your drafts combined, Mike. Who uh, the folks you drafted in all your drafts? Who are your three favorites? Um, I gotta pull them up real quick. Well, no, I don't. Uh, the the Caleb Caleb Williams and Drake May, obviously. I feel like you can't go wrong with either. Honestly, either of the three quarterbacks, you can't go wrong with either of them. Um, the running back Bucky from 
Oregon, I like that pick. My favorite picks, though, were the two tight ends that I picked, um, Kay Stover and um, – why I can't remember Jaheim's last name? Bell. 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 Okay. Maybe – wasn't it a running back name, Bell? Well, anyway. Um, yeah, I feel like if we could leave leave a draft with um, one of the – one of the tight ends that I picked, along with um, Peyton, the, the um, linebacker from North Carolina State, I really, really feel like we'll have a good draft. But as of now, like I said, I'm just floating the surface. Oh, and another thing I wanted to mention, like I know I'm a big dude or whatever, but the wide receiver position is probably the position I care the most about and know the most about. So that's why I kind of didn't want to touch them. Because I didn't, I don't know anything about this year's class. So the next mock, believe me, I'm going to be knee deep in wide receiver knowledge for sure. Absolutely, salute. All right, Eric, who were your three favorite picks amongst all your drafts that you made? <clears throat> yeah, I like. Uh, I'll, I'll go mid rounds for these. Tommy Eichenberg, I drafted him in both of my drafts. So obviously, I like him a lot. I do. I think he's going to be. Uh, that type of, of player that that we that, that Peters would like to draft. Um, I love Cade Stover. I think I made it very clear how much I like Cade Stover. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give it a – I'm going to I'm gonna do a 3A and 3B. Will Shipley and Xavier Legat. I like both of them quite a bit. Uh, so we'll, we'll call that <clears> – <throat> we'll call that one a draw. Yeah. Can't go wrong with South Carolina Gamecock receivers. I mean, Devo Samuel and a few other folks in the NFL really balling out. Shipley pick was really smart. Um, and he wasn't on any of our other lists, too, mind you. So that's a really smart pick because you slipped him by us. Um, my three favorite picks, Jonah Ellis. I just think he's – I hate to say it like this, but he, and no offense to the Chase Young supporters, he's kind of the anti-Chase Young. You know what I mean? He's not – he doesn't have a lot of traits. I'm a traits guy. He doesn't have a lot of I traits. Get just gets the job done. Um, I think he'd be great here. I like my Dolan Hoker pick. Dallin Holker, excuse me. I think as a tight end, oh, man, he's so, so physical and mean. He's a mean-spirited guy on the football field. We need that here. And then I think my other pick that I really liked, um, I, I'm going to do a 3A and 3B, Jaheim Bell, if we get him there. I love that pick. And then Xavier Weaver, the wide receiver out of Colorado. I felt like he just brings a dimension to this team that we haven't had and don't have currently. So there it is. There you folks have it. We will be back soon with more content. But for now, put your mocks in the comments. Tell us what you hated about our picks. Tell Mike why you hate the Eric B. And I mean, <laughs> part of his. And uh, like, comment, subscribe. We'll read them. We know we'll discuss them in our text group. Uh, but, uh, yeah, keep it going, guys. Share the podcast. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We appreciate you kicking it with us. Uh, and for those that have been riding with us in, since the beginning, and are still here. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Commanders Declassified Podcast. We are out of here. Peace.